ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Gamescom 2012. It is the final day, of course, of Gamescom, and we have a fantastic upper bracket final coming for you in around about five to seven minutes' time. But first of all, what we'd like to do, and myself and Isaac up on here on the stage, we thought we'd give you some free stuff. Who would like some free goodies? Come okay, on up to this top front of the stage, awesome. Come and join us to the front of the stage. Come and join us. Yeah, Anyone come on up like to the front of the stage, things. guys. The reason like you have to come stuff. to me is because I'm not allowed to, to throw things. Okay, so Isaac's going to help me as well. I'm We've not got sure. some cool stuff. Do you want to give out some hats? Yeah, yeah, we'll get you a microphone that yeah, works I'm not as sure. well. Oh, oh, there we go. Hello, sound production. Can, All right, we, cool. can we have Isaac's microphone up as well? Okay, first of all, we've got some World of Warcraft books. Who would like one of these? No. There's a couple of shaking it. These are good. <laughs> all right, let me hear you cheer. <laughs> Rubbish. <laughs> Let's try that again. You ready? One, two, three, cheer. <laughs> yeah, much better. I'm going to dive in here and give you a book. There we go. And we've also got some uh, baseball caps as well. Who'd like a World of Warcraft baseball cap? Okay. I'm going to hand a couple of these out as well. We've got a few really cool prizes up here, which we're going to try and... Uh, Who's well, the one doing that loud whistle? Someone was whistling so we're loud. We're going to make them work Where's for the it, whistler? Do it again. Do Who uh, hasn't had a hat? Uh, Careful, steady. Uh, I've also... This is... Like, bear with me. I'm just going to disappear. I'm backstage now. Hold on. Someone asked me to do this earlier. So what I've done is I've got a special signed cap. Who would like the signed cap? Wow, okay. I was so tempted to just throw that into there. I'll leave this one up here for now. <laughs> right, uh, let's hand out some more blocks, shall we? Mega blocks. Who like the mega blocks? You guys aren't nearly, nearly loud enough. Okay. Right, we've got some of these really cool prizes. Wait, up here. What do you think? Why don't we make uh, anyone come up and dance? See who's the best dancer. Anyone want to? Anyone want to come up and dance? Hey, uh, you want to come up and dance? Fact. You want to dance with us? Yeah. No. Oh. Who wants to come and you'll dance? Yeah? Yeah, who's gonna dance? Who's, you'll dance? I, I wanna Go see on, the World of Warcraft dance. Yeah. Who else is gonna dance? You're gonna dance? Alright, let's see it. Stand there All on right. the special marker. Look, there we go. Alright, let's let's have the best World of Warcraft dance. You gotta do one of the dances and impersonation of one of the races, okay? So what what dance are you gonna do and then do it do the best one you can? What? World of Warcraft dances, you know? Oh, come Which on. One? You have to do one. Whoever does a better job is going to win, okay? Which one are you going to do? Okay, can we get some music in the house? Is, have we got some music ready? Some nice, um, dancey music? Good All right, let's see it. Let's okay. see it. Take it away. Okay, let's see your dance. Let's see the moves. Let's give him a round of applause. He's going to give us a dance. Go, keep going. Go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I gotta tell you. You gotta get more into it than that. You gotta That's do it better. Awful. Come on, go for it, man. You gotta commit. You gotta commit. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna, all right, I'm all gonna right. let this guy have a all go right, now. Right, what what dance are you gonna do? What? What dance do you wanna do? Um, I think I'm gonna dance the Morgan dance because it's the only dance I know. <laughs> go for it. Give him a okay. round of applause, guys. Give him a cheer. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! All right, all right, guys. Okay, so who do you think? Who do you think was the better dancer? Give a cheer if you think this guy's a better dancer. All right, all right. Now give a cheer if you think this guy's a better dancer. All right, I think we have a winner. We have a winner. Good job, man. Here you go. What Ladies we give? and gentlemen, one winner down. What should we give the other guy, Paul? Okay, I'm gonna give some more hats out because we're running out of time. So let's give away some more free stuff right back here. There we go. You guys are, yeah, there's another one, Look, There's a signed cat there. Look after that one. Don't put it on eBay. I don't know. We've also got uh, some more of the warlocks as well. Who'd like a warlock? I want to hear you shout. Ready? Let's hear you scream. One, two, three. <laughs> this guy down is very loud. I don't know how you were so loud. You're so small. Uh, right, we've also got one more book to give away. World of Warcraft book. Who wants the book? I'm going to go down there. Yep, uh, one more Mega Blocks. What's the Mega Blocks? All right, one more prize. Right, so, what should we make him do for this, Paul? Right, Rock, Paper, Scissors, World Championship. Rock, you Paper, ready? Scissors, World Championship. Who All can right. do Rock, Paper, Scissors? No, no one's on. good at Rock, Paper, Scissors? Schnick, snack, snook. 
Oh, yeah, so, right, right, okay, okay, yep, come and join us. All right, let's see Stand it. here, like, face each other. What are we doing, best of five, best of three? Best of five, best all right, of best five. of five. Are you ready? One, two, three, go. Oh, oh one, one oh, okay. Okay, all right. When you're ready, go. Oh, oh. two with the scissors. Is it going to be a 3 0? Oh. Go. Oh, oh. Whoa, what do you know? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, well done. It's a good Unfortunately, try. Good try. Commiserations. Oh, wow. What do you know? That was fun. That was fun. That I liked the dance. Fun. This guy was a pretty good dancer over here. Yeah, it was pretty rough on the dances. But, you, think, you, know. you think he'd be busting those moves out in the club, maybe? Yeah. He'd probably get some ladies, right? Yeah, yeah. I'll give you that one. You'll probably get better moves than I have anyway. Uh, right, so enough of the nonsense. It's back to the serious stuff right now because we are coming very close, very close to the grand final. So let me just remind you about this tournament, okay? World of Warcraft, European Invitational. We started with eight teams, 24 players, one trophy, $30,000 on the line. And it's all come down to just four teams remaining now. Four teams, two in the lower bracket, two in the upper bracket. Next up, we're going to get the upper bracket final underway. Are you are you pumped for this, by the way? I know? am pumped for this, man. It's going to be really exciting. We're down to the very best teams. Uh, only the most competitive are remaining. And I mean, we just saw some pretty insane games. You know, Kuna's team looked like they almost were going to get knocked out. Then we're able to come back and have some pretty incredible wins. So I'm really excited. I hope everyone is here and I hope everyone is at home because we're going to get that started for you very shortly. So, OK. Without taking any more time up, I'd also like to welcome the guys over in Hall 6 uh, at the Blizzard booth. Hello, hello Blizzard booth, make some noise, we might hear you from Hall 8. Uh, thank you for joining us, you're going to be witness to a very, very special matchup right now here in Gamescom 2012. It is the CM Storm Arena and we have the upper bracket final for you. So, without wasting any more time, let's bring the teams out. Please make some noise for Just Be Honest! And these guys will play Yaz Presents. It was round the wrong way, but you didn't notice that. OK, the idea. I'm going to hand over now to Azale, who is going to interview these two teams. Remember, they are already guaranteed to finish top three, but only the top two will make it through to the global finals. All right, guys, so we are here, Zunyaki. You want to step over? You want to step over as well? So, guys, you guys have both had pretty, pretty long road. You know, Maybe, are you are you where you thought you'd be in the tournament? Are you really happy with how everything's gone? Oh, for sure. I mean, we we haven't lost yet, so it's always a great feeling, you know, to be at least top three for now. And now we have all the chances to make at least top two and maybe the grand finals. Yeah. Well, I mean, obviously, top three not bad, but top two is the goal that everyone is going for. Uh, I mean, are you guys confident? Like you said, you haven't lost. You beat Kuna's team 3-0. That had to feel good. Uh, now, can you build off that confidence that you gained from winning that match? I mean, yeah, for sure it does. It does help your confidence a lot, uh, especially a team, you know, uh, a team that I think we would have done better than against RLS. So uh, for us, I think all, we have all the chances. All right, man. Well, best of luck to you. If you guys win, you're going to China. That has to be pretty exciting. I'm sure it's on your mind. So uh, best of luck. Round of applause for Yas Presents. All right. Now, here we have their competitors. You know, I don't think many people would have predicted that you guys would be in the winner's final. So, do you, you know, what do you have to say to people who are maybe doubting you guys? Were you guys confident the whole time? Yeah. Basically, uh, since the start of the tournament, we thought we're going to make it to the finals. Because our comp is really strong, we invented it pretty much, nobody else plays it. So basically no team has any practice against our comp and we have an advantage. Yeah, that is a definite advantage. Um, I mean, what is it about your setup that makes it so strong? What is it that gives you that advantage? Uh, can you repeat that? Uh, what is it that makes your setup so strong? Uh, basically it's that we have two hexes on 35 second CD, as I said before, which is a lot of CC, and in addition, addition to that, we have the Enhancement Shaman, which, uh, which serves an off healer, which is very important at some, some uh, nukes. And the Warlock uh, can support us with the Hexes and make a big CC chain to win. 
Yeah, well, uh, you guys have looked very strong throughout the tournament. I saw you guys doing some war games earlier against another team. You know, how did those go for you guys? Are you guys confident you're going to take them down and go to China? Well, to be honest, uh, I think we can do this uh, for sure. But on the other hand, uh, another Souls games uh, against uh, their comp, against Intagin, the other team. And maybe they know how, how to outplay us now. OK, OK. So what is your prediction for the map score? Uh, I don't know. I really don't know. No prediction? All right, guys. Well, a round of applause here. One of the underdogs from the tournament's making it all the way to the winner's bracket finals. One more win, and they'll be on their way to China. Stick with us, guys. I'm going to throw it back to Red Eye. I'm going to head over to the commentary booth. Shazayao is going to go and make his way to the commentary box right now. And uh, just for those of you who have just joined us, whether you're in booth six, at uh, the Blizzard booth in Hall 6, or whether you're all around the world and you're just tuning in right now, you are live from Gamescom 2012 from the CM Storm ESL Arena for the World of Warcraft European Invitational Upper Bracket Final. It doesn't get much bigger than this. $30,000 on the line, ladies and gents. It's time to rock and roll in World of Warcraft. Rock and roll indeed. That is what we're about to see. One rock versus one roll. Which will win, the rock or the roll? You decide. The rock, 10 times out of 10. Which, which one's the rock? Doesn't matter, does it? Can you do the rock? Like, I can't really, but you just did, so I don't have to. Oh, I can only do it with one eyebrow. I probably look like I have an issue trying to do yeah, it with the other. You may look a little bit spastic, but that's OK. You know, you're a lovable spast. And Thank that's what's you. important. No problem, man. And guys, for those of you who are just joining us, I'm EGSL. I'm here with my main man, Com Radical. You know, I've got to give a little bit of shout out to my team, to Team EG. You can check us out at myeg.net. And uh, yeah, I, I play WoW as well, obviously, with Talbotar and Sidu. Shout out to them. And, uh, you know, I'm living right now in, in Phoenix, Arizona at the EG Training House. I'm casting SC2. I'm casting WoW. I'm playing WoW. So, yeah, I'm enjoying life, man. You know, I actually enjoy your casting, and I, I know when you're casting because you usually tweet about it. And you tweet at it at EG Azale. That's a good point. So that's, that's how I know when you're casting, <laughs> man. And I always tune into every yeah. single cast. And I know when you're casting at Comrade AO, and I've been doing a lot of WoW casts with you guys. You can check us out. Uh, we do a lot of stuff online, so if you're enjoying our casting, tune into that. This is obviously a little bit different. We're doing the first-person thing, something neither of us had done before, so we're doing the best that we can. I hope that you guys are enjoying our commentary, and I hope that you've enjoyed the tournament so far, uh, because I definitely have, and I mean, we are down to these final teams. We're going to have their first team punch their ticket to China uh, right after this, man. It's like, this is so important. You have to win here. You, you do not want to be, like, sure, you're in the top three, whatever. That's good. I, <laughs> I get it. But... You know, I've finished third at regionals before. It does not feel good, man. I yeah. finished third, and, uh, you know, we actually lost by, by only one map. And the team that we lost to ended up with, winning BlizzCon that year, and it wasn't a good feeling. I really? Can tell you that. Yeah, yeah I, I bet, man. Well, so, <laughs> uh, actually, I know what it's like to not make it into a, an extra stage in the tournament. Like, uh, I went to WCG. I replaced this guy because I'm better, and uh, also because he's Canadian. But... We were the only group to not be able to make it into the actual round of four. Yeah. And it feels so awful to be that close and to just not be able to make it. Yeah. And that's how it's going to be for three of these teams here. Well, one of the teams. So. Well, there are, there are five remaining and yeah. two get to go to China. So three of the teams here. So once again, I'm wrong. Right, I'm right. I think we are wrong. in the Constellation Final Zone lower bracket. So we only have three are, teams are we? remaining. Yeah. Do, we, do we know who made it out between Imminent Tomb and... Ninja pool? Uh, I'm not sure about that, but I think we have teams in the Constellation Finals, but I'm not positive, at least one. Uh, but I'm not sure. I mean, we'll get confirmation on that later. Regardless, you know, one of these teams uh, is going to be going to China after this. The other team is going to have another shot in the Constellation Finals. That's where they will fall down to, because neither of these teams have lost yet. They're not in danger of being eliminated from the tournament. Uh, they're just in danger of being kind of knocked out lower bracket. Uh, so obviously you want to win, you want to be going to the Grand Finals, and then you know once you have that secured, once you know you're going to China, uh, you're not going to be able to let up. You want to win that first place prize. It's so much more money. Yeah, and that is another right there that you're seeing, another one of the best DKs in the entire world, very skilled. And it's interesting to see how these people are actually playing WoW. You know, he's playing with it in a windowed mode. Yeah. And I actually play with it windowed but maximized, so I still see like the World of Warcraft thing at the top, yeah. and I still see the bar at the bottom. But uh, most people tend to play with it full screen. Yeah, I, I mean, it's just like basically some people are used to different resolutions, different screen sizes, things like that. Like uh, for a while, I got used to playing on a laptop screen, right? So it was really small, and then it came to a tournament with like these 23-inch widescreens, and I actually played like that. 
Um, I actually had my, my computer set up though, so it was just a big black box around the outside. Uh, really? Yeah, it wasn't like you couldn't see the, the main screen or anything, but that's how I played it because it's like when you're used to like a 16, 17 inch monitor, everything's in a way different place yeah. if, if you're playing on a 23 inch widescreen. So, uh, you know, the players are basically just trying to make it as close to what they have at home as possible, which is completely understandable. Well, okay, so when this guy plays WoW, if you've ever seen his stream and when he has a webcam on, his eyes are actually going. So for him to be on a, on a bigger monitor, I'd imagine his eyes are just the most crazy thing to look at this. <laughs> that, that's my impersonation of you playing. Nice, man. That's you. Pretty good. Yeah. Do you want to see me when I play? I give it like five out of ten. Yeah. Um, well, I think we took me off the camera, but... Yeah, that's a good thing. I look, I look very relaxed <laughs> and uh, just ready to own, especially that's when... That's why I just don't notice anything going on? No, I notice everything yeah. going on. Oh, okay. 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 Even the sharks? Okay, man. Not even a funny joke. <laughs> there, are, there are no sharks in the arena. Actually, wait. What's Th that there thing? There are. There's a crocodile. One. <laughs> There's a crocodile in the arena in Dalaran. There is. What's his name? Do you remember his name? I forget his name. But he it does shoot out. Yeah, then, he yeah. shoots out, and I think you can tab target to him. Yeah, you can. I, or you can click on it at least. I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, but anyway, guys, this is going to be uh, the upper bracket finals. The winner moving on to the grand finals, being guaranteed top two, and a trip to China for the world finals, uh, where they will face off against two teams from North America, two teams from Taiwan, two teams from Korea. And, I mean... It, the prize pool is always insane there. I don't know if it's been announced for this year, but it's usually 75k first place prize at BlizzCon. I assume it's going to be similar. So it's it's pretty insane. You're competing for so much money, and um, especially getting go to go to China is really really cool. But uh, we are going to be following Swapsy here once again. This double shaman warlock team, you know, on the verge of, of getting top two. How will they do against another and his team? We will find out. Yeah, Swapsy already purging up another. He gets put into a death call already. I don't know if that's the best option. You know, you kind of want to save it for when they have their cooldowns popped and when they're yeah. actually doing pressure. Or like on a Lichborn. I mean, you have a bit of a waste. It was even dispelled. But uh, regardless, you know, that early death coil, will they come back to regret it? There's a repent onto Botar. Uh, we can see this Warlock is taking quite a bit of damage here. A uh, Hodge following that up onto Botar. They're going to swap over onto him. He's going to have to trinket immediately. The Gargoyle has been popped. Cooldowns are used here. Uh, will they be able to connect to that Sean? They're actually swapping back to the lock. He's at 40k HP, 30k, 20k. Is he going to be able to catch an NS? I think he just did. Uh, but Botar is not going to have Shrinky. He's not going to have NS. And uh, another at the same time is taking a lot of damage down about 50k. You know, it's nice that he's playing Draenei because he's able to throw his Gift of the Naru on another target as well. So that's going to help them out. But who will this red DK Priest decide to connect to? Looks like they're just trying to stop all damage coming from this Warlock team. And there's a, there was a full Hex onto Botar. That means it was spell stolen by another. So great job there. He's out of it now. But they're still trying to hit another, the DK. He's playing on that Undead that you see just trying to kite away, throwing those Death Coils into his main target. I believe he's just hitting Swapsy at this point. But I really want to see them swap over onto Botar. I think that's the best choice. Enhancement yeah, Shamans don't have too many great there's deals. There's the Maelstrom proc and the Instant Hex onto Zunyaki. We can see it was out of an MCS, so another may be in some trouble here. Swapsy was taking a lot of damage, but caught a big heal uh, before Botar got repented there. And this Warlock is taking you know a fair bit of damage as well. The Hodge going to be falling it up, and Botar is going to be swapped too hard. AMS has been popped. He's down to 50k HP. Man, just have to link here. He's at 30k. He's actually just going to try to kite it out of there. He wants to save those cooldowns. Uh, sitting now at about 70k, 60k. HP. Uh, this DK is just trying to do so much damage to the Shaman, not trying to let him get any heals off whatsoever. Maelstrom proc once again. There's the G heal instantly thrown out by Swapsy onto Botar. That's going to help him out and allow him to not use any of those big defensive cooldowns. Yeah, another still being hit. He was rooted by that Frost Shock. He's going to catch Freedom now, which means he's going to be able to connect to his target. He will be hitting the Warlock of Bloodstack, but he's taking so much damage. He's down to 40k right now. He did catch a Power Word Shield, even Lichborn healing himself because he feels he needs to use that defensive cooldown at this point. Botar is not doing too well on mana. Zuniaki has about double the mana of the Shaman. They're still trying to hit another, another just trying to connect to his target, but it must be so frustrating when you have so much to have to deal with. Yeah, it definitely is. And there's a Tongues once again reapplied onto Zunyaki as he does pop that PI for the dispels, catching that UA dispel, dipping down a little bit. But uh, we can see that this uh, this DK is taking so much pressure here from Swapsy. He's just sticking on the DK the whole time, riding him. And there's the MCS into the Hex once again onto Zunyaki. He was stuck in that full. Another's going to have to pop the AMS down about 40k HP. Uh, Zunyaki does come out. He's going to give him the shield and the palm. And it looks like that's going to be enough for now. Uh, but Zunyaki is, is letting himself sit low. I feel, I feel like he needs to throw like you know, a renew on himself or something. And give him some healing, top himself up, or you know he could be a viable swap target here. 
Yeah, you could. I think they're just probably trying to play the long game. There is a Hodge out onto Botar. He's at about 42k mana, but not too much damage going out onto their main target, which is the Warlock. He, now he's taking big damage down to 50k health already, down to 38. Will he end up going down here? They may need a link. He gets oh, they grip, grip back. him back in, and I think the link is definitely going to have to be forced. But another is PS at 20k HP. A massive heal came in onto that Warlock. It must have been a crit G heal, uh, but another in a lot of trouble at 50k. Uh, we can see that Zunyaki is really letting himself rot a lot. It's Quilt and Hex at the same time there. He's going to be stuck in that full. It looks like he did break on a damage or something, uh, but he is out. He catches the shield uh, from Zunyaki, and now they're going to be top back off once again. He's popping some of those cooldowns. You can see his haste cooldown has been used. Gargoyle back up once again. Zunyaki, though, is at about 50k just from that off damage. Yeah, I think they need to swap over onto Botar, dude. I don't see them really killing Swapsy or the Warlock of Bloodsack at this moment. Another still down to 50% HP, taking so much damage. His pet getting low as well. He will have another summon available, but he's at 93k at this point. I believe he got a pretty big wog there. Zuniaki, 31k mana, and Botar is caught in a full repentance here, but a full hex onto Zuniaki. This could be big trouble for either team at this point. Still just trying to tunnel damage oh, and there's into the another. Onto Botar. Looks like that was trinketed immediately. Uh, an MCS onto Zuniaki. Uh, this Warlock is taking a lot of damage out of a 70% HP, a half HP now. Catches a big heal uh, before Botar got strang there. Uh, we can see AMS was used by another. He's trying to keep the damage rolling. He does not feel like uh, he can go defensive at this point uh, because his priest is so low on mana, man. Uh, Zuniaki at 50k HP. Catches the UA to spell. He's trying to do everything he can to keep his team alive, but he is just tapped on mana. Yeah, this is not a good situation for them. They, I, I just switch on to Zuniaki at this point, but they're going to put him into a full hex instead. He is going to have to sit inside of that full. His teammates and appear to be fine. So another actually stole that hex and put it on Botar. It was decursed though by Swapsy, uh, so because of that double decurse, not that effective. Yeah, and that, that has to feel a little bit bad. If you get a hex, you feel accomplished. But an AMZ goes down as another's taking too much damage at 71k right now. Zuniaki got a fair bit of mana back, and I don't actually know how he did that. I think he might have sat down for a drink or maybe Shadow Fiend or one yeah, of those I cool think events. it might have been the Fiend because I did not see him going for the drink. But there's a repent onto Botar. Uh, no damage really coming out just yet, though. The Warlock dipping a little bit as he does tap. He's out about 60k HP, taking quite a bit now. Divine Him coming out here. Uh, we can see Swapsy's trying to get over to interrupt it, but he doesn't even land the interrupt, so he just kind of ran over there for nothing. And that allows another to be completely topped off. But the Spirit Wolves are out. Big damage will be coming here. A 31k Lava Lash coming in there uh, from that Enhancement Shaman. Yeah, this is not looking good for the Red DK Priest at this point. You need to you need to get your cooldowns. And I, I keep saying it. Just swap over onto that Shaman. I don't care if he has another Enhancement Shaman there for him. You need to do pressure and you need to run him oom. Um, and that's the best way to do that. But uh, this Enhancement will be hitting the Red at this point. The Red is at about 60k HP. Um, Zuniaki is using his Aura mm -hmm. Mastery casted heals. It's going to mean he cannot be interrupted by those shocks. They have to be yeah, so and annoying. Also to gives you that free cast. But Maelstrom once again up. There's the hex on Zuniaki, and I think he's actually trying to time his UA to spells uh, to break the hexes, which is just insane. Um, but it, another is in a lot of trouble here, and there's another hex available. There was a DR hex put onto Zunyaki, or repent onto Botar, who's now a little bit behind on mana. And this wall has to tap at 60k HP. Could be in some trouble here, uh, but he is going to get out of there. He's at about 70k now. Uh, we can see another just constantly is low because Zunyaki CC'd so, so much, and there was an MCS put there. Uh, there's a shock onto Zunyaki's heal. Another will be forced to pop the AMS. I think a sacrifice did come out there as well. Our Guardian once again popped here uh, by this Red Paladin. And I think we're going to see some big cooldowns coming and maybe a big swap onto Swapsy. He needs a Shamanistic Rage before the damage actually comes in, as that will prevent so much. But look at Botar's mana. He's at 23k at this point. Zuniaki is at 28, but he's been sustaining at that low mana this entire time. Oh, and there's seems. the Hodge onto Botar, and uh, they are trying to get some damage going on this Warlock still, just using that for the CC. But uh, not that much really was able to come out, and he's going to end up still being out of a full HP. Uh, unfortunately for them, I feel like Zunyaki maybe could go for a drink at this point because there's not much damage coming out. Uh, Zunyaki has pretty decent mana. Actually, the Fiend has been popped, so he's going to be just fine uh, with, on that mana. But it, it is getting kind of kited now, uh, and they have to be careful of that because, yeah, like it, it hasn't gotten a hit in a long time. Yeah, they're still just trying to hit this enhancement. is trying to hit anything that comes into his line of sight. Anything he can. His main target is going to be the DK, of course. That's the one he feels he can do the most damage to. He's actually casting a greater healing wave at this point. Still hitting another that is the 
the DK on the team playing the undead class, or race rather, but Botar is taking a little bit of damage at 82k at this point. wings has been popped, man, and they are going to be trying to go hard here on Botar. Uh, we saw Big Crit Wog with the wings up, was able to top off another, but really not able to get that much damage out. The big thing, though, Botar is so low on mana, and Zunyaki, as you said, doing such a good job maintaining. If he could maybe get a burn off or something, that could be huge, uh, but I'm not sure if he will be able to with double shock and whatnot. Uh, there's the Hodge onto Botar for the CC, who is at 7k mana right now. A uh, Hex going to be put out onto Zunyaki, but he is fully dotted, so it may just break. It looks like it did, and this walks at about 50k. Uh, I don't think he has a port near Shaman at all, so Link is going to be forced. Yeah, and this is actually pretty good for the Red DK at this point. For Botar to be lowing, low on mana compared to Zuniyaki, that's what they're trying to go for. Kara is a little bit low on health at this point. He's at 21k. He need to bubble, man. Uh, Kara did bubble there, and uh, they're going to go right back onto him. Yeah, as soon as that bubble fades, I, I see them getting onto him for sure. And Zuniaki needs to pick up his team. His Divine Hymn is still on cooldown. And Kara is going to have to use all of his Holy Power to just wog his team up. I believe that was a big wog onto another there. And Kara looks to be fine at this point. Yeah. Another actually uh, uses Lichborn heal there as well, so uh, some major defensive cooldowns have been used. It looks like they are going to maybe hit Kara, at least they were for a bit, but because he does not have that bubble. Uh, but Zunyaki, you know, he's, he's just really low on mana again, but both these healers have been doing a great job maintaining at that low mana. They just have to make sure they don't let any healer get off a drink, and then, you know, maybe just try to get back to Botar, and it looks like that's what they want to do, is he is gripped in and Hodge. He's at about 90k HP right now, but the Necro is stacking, and it can be very costly on the mana to heal yourself up against this DK Rep Priest. Actually, Swapsy was so smart. When the Hodge came in, he started casting Greater Healing Wave immediately, and that's why Botar w didn't have to use any cooldowns, really. But he's still getting hit super hard at about 50k HP at this point. Another is going to pop his AMS. It's going to mean he can tunnel into him even yeah, harder. And three straight G-Heals from, uh, from Swapsy, but it doesn't look like it's going to be enough, and he's tapped on mana now, and Botar's at 40k. He does catch an NS there. Uh, and another Maelstrom proc does go up. I think that we may have to use it defensively, but instead there's a Fear and a Hex overlap onto Zunyaki. He's going to trick it both happily, and Botar is that 4k mana is just still just kind of stuck uh, getting hit by these uh, by these DPS. Yeah, and it, as soon as the cooldowns come up for this red DK priest, they will probably be able to land a kill. I believe they will be up before Spirit Link comes up, so that's scary. D and it looks like Zuniaki will be going for a Hymn of Hope here, and that's how he's going to get so much mana back. Oh, and, and the Warlock is very low at about 50k HP. There's a Strang into a Hodge on a Botar. He's going to have to trigger that as the Warlock is taking so much damage. But what does Botar really have left? Uh, Zunyaki, you know, his him mana has expired as well. He's going to be Earthbound by that Enhanced Enchant. We can see that Maelstrom proc is up. He may go for the Instant Hex. He does Hex Zunyaki on that Penance. And that is basically the last of Zunyaki's mana. Another going to be forced uh, to pop that AMS. He does pop his Trinket and his Gargoyle once more. They can maybe get some damage out here because uh, they have to try to get a kill. They have to just get this pressure and, and finish off Botar because he has no mana left. Maybe Maybe they're just going to try to ride out this Warlock. Botar at 300 mana right now. The Warlock at 70k HP. Uh, Botar really has nothing left at all. Uh, Zunyaki going to pop the inner focus, going for the heal, but oh my god, another just falls. And even though Botar was tapped, so was Zunyaki, and they just had nothing left. And you know, that flash heal actually landed like within split seconds of another's death, which is just so unfortunate yeah. for them to, to actually be so yeah. close. And, and you can see the frustration on another's face right there, you know, kind of just... Uh, head in his hands a little bit. It's, it's frustrating to lose a match like that, uh, but it was really close. It was quite a long match as well, and I mean, uh, it just seems so tough to really finish off that, that team. It's like, you know, they did force out a link, but the, time, the only time they really got link was, in my opinion, a bit of a mistake from the Warlock. You know, he got out of Ranger's port, or maybe it was a mistake from the Shaman. You could blame it on either one, whatever, but uh, basically he couldn't port because the Shaman was way away from his portal, and he didn't replace it, so, uh, you know, they had to drop that link down, but that was really the only only huge time they were in trouble. Yeah, and that's because Swapsy was very good at healing when he had to. You know, he cast so many heals that game. I don't yeah. actually know how many or what his total healing was overall, but I'm sure it was very high. And well, that, and that the was thing good. Is, a lot of people probably aren't even noticing that mail, uh, most of the Maelstrom proxies he's using are just on heals. Like, he's yeah. just uh, throwing out, you know, G heals over and over on the Shaman when every time they go on, every time he gets that proc, uh, he does just throw out those instant G heals. Uh, obviously, he's using, you know, a fair number for damage as well with just lightning bolts and things like that. Um, but Hex, you know, has, has a decent cooldown. He's getting way more Maelstrom procs than he can use Hexes. So uh, a lot of the, the instant heals are just, are just coming out from him and are really just, you know, removing the Necro stack, allowing the Shaman to not have to use very many cooldowns. Yeah, good point, man. And it's also really interesting that Swapsy doesn't actually use class-colored arena frames yeah, or nameplates. Yeah, to me, yeah. And I think that's super important, yeah. but I, I guess it works for him. But I always want to know because I think it just helps out even the slightest bit for awareness. And yeah. I think that's very important. I would agree. You know, and I, I even saw one player using no nameplates at all, which was really strange to me. Yeah. Uh, because it's, you know, it's so hard to kind of 
killer chitin or anything like that when when you have name plates up but well, teach their own it's funny you're talking about the rep paladin against kuno when it was that 1v1 he actually circled the wrong nagrin pillar because he didn't have name plates and then he was like oh whoops and then he went and got on him again but yeah so i think name plates are pretty important guys yeah but it is a 1-0 lead for this team man and uh, I am just surprised, you know, just be honest, they're really looking so strong. Now they're up 1-0 against the Osprey Zents, and this is not a team I really thought was going to do much in this tournament. I didn't know about them, uh, but obviously they're proving me wrong, and they're proving they deserve to be here. Yeah. Yeah, I was actually so surprised because it's it's such a weird setup, and, they, you know, they said it, it isn't the strongest, but I don't know how much I agree with saying it's not the strongest. You have a tremor for every single fear, yeah. a, every single AoE fear against... Uh, the red DK priest teams and then against the warlock teams you have a timer for every single howl of terror you have shocks that are so important because Zuniaki gets put so far behind maybe he has to use more uh, more flash heals with uh, you know knowing that he's going to be able to land him and that's not as good on mana as if he were just you know yeah. to be casually throwing out renews or penances or something like that yeah no that is, it's very true and um, I mean both healers do get quite low on mana though and it's yeah. like you know it looks like one team is going to win on mana and the other team is going to win on mana but um, you know, no healer was really able to get a big drink off, and sometimes that can be what you need, because even if you're able to maintain low on mana, you can't dispel offensively, you can't purge, uh, and that's something that a lot of players may not really be noticing, because uh, if Zunyaki has higher mana, he's able to dispel off those riptides, which just makes such a big difference. Yeah, that's very true, man. And on TR gear, people run him so quickly, and that is just because you don't have near the, the mana regen, and for priests specifically, I believe you get 8% of your mana back whenever a shield breaks. I, I may be mistaken there, and I think it's on an 8 second internal global cooldown, or internal cooldown. So, you know, if your mana pool is higher because your item level is higher, you have more intellect, yeah. and, you know... More spirit, etc. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, the trinkets are usually better, things like that. Um, so yeah, your mana does maintain a lot better, but here, uh, you can oom very, very fast if you're not careful. So uh, these healers really have to do a good job conserving their mana and not getting overzealous, you know, overhealing too much, things like that. You know, sometimes, uh, even though it can be risky to just go for a healing wave instead of a greater heal, things like that, you have to do that because you have to be able to keep your mana high. Yeah, and look at how ferocious these guys look. Look at him. <laughs> he looks like he's just going to destroy he his pissed, team. Man. He's like, going to fight. Look at another. He's ready to go. He looks so intense at this point. Zuniaki as well, and Kara. Kara on the far end, Zuniaki in the middle, another closest. So, Azale, based on that game, who do you think will take this series and be sure to go to China? I mean, I, I think that just based on the war games I was watching earlier in that game as well, just be honest, it looks so strong. Like, they, they just look so good um, as far as, you know, winning this series. So, I'm not really sure what Yasper Suns can do differently. Um, you know, a lot of their wings, it felt like they just didn't get anything done with. But maybe it's just because yeah, now they're taking too much damage. They feel like they have to go for the wings logs, things like that. Um, but I, I feel like, you know, you just have to make those swaps uh, to, the, to Shaman. It's like, even yeah. if you don't kill him, you're getting so much mana out of him. And I feel like that may be the most important part uh, in these games because it doesn't seem like they can get the kills uh, just through pure damage because of all those G heals coming out of the Enhancement Shaman. So maybe just more swaps to him instead of the Warlock. Yeah, I would agree. And we will be following swaps the once again, he is the enhancement on this team, and it's interesting to see the the different totems that they're all using. There's is there a there's one healing stream? Maybe they're double healing streaming or, or something like that because it does stack and it is very good. Yeah, and they have. I mean, obviously the Fell Hunter gives the mana spring back, so there's no reason to use that. But there's a Frostrock coming out. Frostrock root. They're going to dot off that ghoul, and another doesn't really want to lose a ghoul this early because. Uh, you know, the, the resummon's probably not even up, so they, yeah, there's the death blow heals coming in. He was actually uh, dropping down some chains of ice and, and death and decay and things like that, trying to get some rude power to be able to uh, heal that pet up. Yeah, that's good for him for sure. And now it looks like Swapsy may be looking to go in there, but I, I think he's a little worried that he's going to get swapped to. You know, maybe they should just put the Earth Shield and Riptide on him and just go for it. But it looks like the battle will start now. He's and actually focusing on that pet, man. He wants to kill that pet. Uh, but I think that's a mistake. Another is probably not going to let it die, you know, as long as he has Rune Power. And yeah, there's the Death Bell Heals coming in, so he's going to have to give up on that. And they're going to swap right over to another. There's the grip onto Botar. Botar already taking a lot of damage. A down to 50k HP. It wings are pop. Uh, can they get a kill here instantly? Uh, Spirit Wolves have been popped as well. Botar diving down about 30k before topping himself up to about 50k. Uh, but he is in so much trouble. 
Yeah, this is not good for this Enhancement Shaman team at this point. Botar at about 9, 70k HP. He will have to throw out the Link. And Look he got at killed the instantly, man. He's still at about... Uh, the Warlock didn't even get in. Botar's at 20k, 10k HP. He's just gonna die. And the Warlock unable to get in that Link. Uh, Swapsy, I don't even know if he was in it. It was just like, it was killed instantly. Yeah, that was very good by another Kara and Zuniaki. They're just on top of it for sure. And that's what I like to see. I like to see these yeah. teams. You know, how many tournaments have we casted where there's been a Spirit Link totem that went down and we said yeah. if they killed that, they would have won? Well, and even in this tournament, I mean, to be fair, there's so many uh, that are just left alive pretty much the entire duration. I feel like it's just such a big mistake. Uh, and, you know, these guys are just not making that mistake, and they're able to get a killer result. Like, their watch just couldn't get in, and the health is only redistributed for a second. You also have to remember it reduces everyone's damage taken by 10%, uh, so it's like it, there's so many benefits to killing that Spirit Link really fast, and I think that uh, that was really what got them to kill. Uh, and although Swampsy did throw out you know, a couple instant G heals, things like that, just was not enough. Botar took way too much damage, and after a very quick game two, kind of the polar opposite of game one, we're yeah. all tied up. Well, that's actually what I like to see, is when people adapt and learn what they're fighting, then they tend to do, um, and they do a better job. That makes me happy as a, as a spectator, because I, I think that's so important to be able to, to know what went wrong and just improve on that. That's what makes you better as a player. So Yeah, I would definitely have to agree, man. And, and having adaptability in these tournaments, things don't always go how you, how you figured they would, so it's like... It just makes a massive difference, and I think that they're doing a great job of that so far. Yeah, I would agree. That's Zuniaki there, by the way. You, when you see his left hand, that is Zuniaki's <laughs> left hand. That, that left hand is the hand that heals thousands of health points per game. It is. It is, man. Yeah, and you can, you can see they're all very hot right now, and that's because it, it is burning up. I think it's something like 105 degrees Fahrenheit. Something, something like that. I don't know. It's very hot. You know, it's in the 30s, high 30s, and I think they said it's actually going to be record record high, or at least for this year it's going to be the hottest day or something like that. So yeah. it's really hot, and, you know, people are kind of sweating when I'm sitting here in jeans, and we're uncomfortable, you know. It's a little bit hot. Yeah. But okay. we are alive, guys. We're going into this game. We're going to be falling Swasti once again. You know, can just be honest, take the lead here, or will they start to fall? Uh, will they falter? I mean, they already lost one game very quickly. Uh, will we see a repeat? What do you think, Conrad? I think we may just see a repeat of game one. I think they know they can't just get bursted at the start. So obviously, more, most likely going to throw out more heals than he did in the second game. And already the Warlock's pet is incredibly low on health. It's, it's actually going to die here, and the Warlock pet goes down. One small victory for this and team. He's just going to set it in again. They're probably just going to be like, okay, let's just kill it. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, the, the pet is in there again, man. And uh, he's going to pull it back now. You know, good choice. Because uh, there was, you know, you can see the disease and the chains of ice and everything up on it. So, obviously, another was thinking about just killing it. Um, but they're just going to be sitting back behind the pillars. They're just kind of waiting for the right opportunity. But they have to be careful because uh, we're going we're to see this wall running for Halotair for sure. But right now, they're actually going to be starting on this Rep Paladin, not going on another this game, and that's a pretty interesting change-up. There's the Repent onto Botar, though. Uh, this Warlock's taking up quite a bit of damage, and actually, there's the Grip onto Botar. He's going to be Hodge and Swap to immediately. Uh, we have the Guardian and the Wings pop. Botar going to be taking a ton of damage. He's at 80k, 70k, 60k HP. Gargoyle is up on him as well. We're going to have to see a lot of peels here. Swaps he going for the run cast. G heals. He lands one, but will it be enough? Because Botar's at 40k HP, and he's taking so much damage. Yeah, they need to get some kind of stun on him at this point, as he's at 12 Okay, the Spirit Link goes down. Will they kill it? They kill it before Swapsy gets in, before anyone gets no in. No one got in. Again, he's at 30k, and I think that's just going to result in his death. 10 HP. He goes down, and oh my god, they are killing that so fast. And Botar, you know, none of his team was able to get in the Link two games in a row. Uh, I mean, that's that. That's, you, you, that's like, it's useless if, if no one gets in, man. You have to have your teammates in position when you're going to need it. And you can see the look of frustration on Botar's face there. He is not happy with his team. Well, man, you know, you need to be aware. I mean, I'm not tr not trying to get down on these guys whatsoever because they're fantastic players, as we've seen. But yeah. you need to be aware when your shaman wants to link, and they, they shouldn't have to say, "I need to link." You should just know. Yeah. That's why when you see a lot of top players playing or on streams or whatever, they they start running close when they see the yeah. shaman dipping below a certain percentage. Well, and I think that any <laughs> look at the smile on Miller's face. He's kind of he's pretty happy about <laughs> that. A little bit of a smug smile there from him. Um, but, I mean, I think that you should know any time that Wings and Gargoyle are up on your Shaman, you have to be there for a Link. Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's like, sure, maybe sometimes he's not going to have to use it, whatever. That's great if he doesn't. But if you're not there in preparation, uh, you know, one little thing goes wrong, a couple too many crits, and that's, that's what happens. I mean, they're not giving him a second. If, if those players aren't on top of him when he Links, he's just going to die because they're just killing it so, so fast. And it's, it's really impressive stuff from them. And we need to be seeing more teams doing that. Yeah, I, I agree for sure. I think that's actually probably going to 
going to set it for everybody, everybody that thinks, I don't need to kill Lynx, you know, it's going to redistribute the yeah. health anyway. That, that should prove to you guys right there, especially those of you that are learning the game or just starting to get into the arena, Spirit Link must be killed. So great yeah, job I there. Mean, a little bit of a tip is just you can use mouse over macros to do so. Uh, you know, most classes have some sort of ability that they can use, and you can use mouse over Ice Lance, you can use mouse over Fell Flame, you can use uh, as a DK, mouse over um, Death Coil, you can use mouse over Judge as a Red Pal, and so on and so forth, and uh, mouse over Death as a Priest. There's all these little cool, all these little ways you can do, and it allows you to just target that that uh, that Spirit Link so fast, and you can just get a kill on it really, really quickly without having to target it, detarget everything like that. So it makes it a lot easier, in my opinion. Yeah, and not only that, but for this team as well, specifically, it other people can get inside the link and use defensive cooldowns like the improved Hellstone. I've seen de Death Knights with Shamans on their team. They run in and Lichborn and heal themselves. But this game is about to start in 2-1. Here we go, guys. Ring of Valor. Let's see if this team does anything a little bit different. It is 2-1 in favor of our Red DK I have to Priest. say, it's a scary map by Red DK Priest on as your Shaman, man. This is like the healer slaying map. And Botar knows that he has to stay so far back. If I was him, I'd be sitting in the entrance, man. I wouldn't be up where he is. Uh, but I guess he wants to stay in range of his Warlock. Who's kind of just poking in there. He's trying to get some pressure going. And they're actually going to try to kill uh, this pet. We can see that the, the pet is at about 50% HP already. The Maelstrom has already proc'd. And that's going to give him a nice instant hex to start off the game. U8 spell comes in there from Zunyaki. He's probably going to be hexed off that. Yeah, he is. Nice CC chain already using that U8 to spell against Zunyaki. There's the grip on the Shaman, though. Uh, they're going to be going hard on Botar. Uh, cooldowns are going to be pop. Uh, I don't see a Hodge that has come in yet, so maybe it was grounded or something, but Botar uh, is looking like he's pretty good. Yeah, I, I think they did ground the Hodge, and that's super good for him. Botar is only at about 90k right now, but they're in a good position. This DK has already used his AMS, but Botar is down to 50, 40, and 20k. And he's cutting away for everyone. There's no one in range to Link once again, and he's at 20k, 10k. He just dies. No Link used. And three straight games, man, unable to get the link. And they are pumped, man. We have our first team in the grand finals. Yas presents Zunyaki Kara and another are going to China. Yeah, let's, let's give them a round of applause, everybody, because they will be going to China. You'll see them play again. You'll see more spirit links killed instantly. <laughs> and that's what I love to see. And, I mean, that has to be a disappointing series there, uh, for, for just to be honest. After that first game, uh, just kind of getting dominated in street rate. The three, three straight quick ones. Yeah. Uh, and it's like, I mean, especially the way they went, it, it's got to be frustrating because it's like they didn't get a link off in, in three of the games. I mean, two of them were used, obviously, but they, it didn't do anything because yeah. the players weren't there. So it's got to be frustrating for both the Shaman and his teammates. But, you know, it's not over for them yet. They nope. can still make it back from the consolation lower bracket. But, yeah, so. Yeah, I think that that's. You know, well, that's it for that series. That is going to be a 3-1 win coming back for three straight games. Are going to punch their ticket uh, all the way to China. And Paul is ready on the stage, so we're going to throw it over to Red Eye. It, it's, it's the cameraman. He's squinting at me. Right, OK. Uh, we are back to Gamescom 2012. Congratulations. Well played to Yaz Presents. 3-1 winners in the upper bracket final. They are guaranteed now to go through to the global finals in China, Shanghai, all expenses paid trip as well to represent Europe in that global final. Guaranteed whatever happens for them. However, they have one more match to go, which will be the grand final. So let's get the words of wisdom from Azael with the winners, Yaz presents. So uh, I'm here with Sunyaki. He seemed to be making a habit out of this. He seemed to be up for the winner's interview quite a bit. Uh, it does feel good, you know. It, it, it feels really good to finally, you know, be able to be here and win something and I mean it, it, might, it might look easy like that but it's, it's a lot of effort put together and strategies and so on that we had to adapt during the f first game that we lost and then we adapted a little bit and we were able to pull out a win so it does definitely feel good. So I mean for you guys you know uh, are you happy with what you've done here now or are you still you know hungry for the, for the grand finals? Do you want to get first or are you just like eh, you know we're going to China it's cool. The, the thing is right now is that obviously we're really happy. Top two, going to Asia, it's going to be amazing. Uh, now, I think the possibilities of us getting a team, I think we all fought, fought through already. Kuna's RLS, Brindelli's KFC, and then Bluxstack. Uh, if, I, if I'm right, we already fought this team, so obviously I'd say we're favored. 
All right, man. Well, you guys have done incredibly well. And I have to say, to me, the key in that series was just how fast you were killing the Spirit Links. Two games in a row, Spirit Link goes down from Botar. No one's able to get it in before you killed it. Uh, you know, who was it that was killing it so fast? It was a combination of teams, you know, were using mouse over macros. What was it that you guys did to kill that so fast? Usually, it's probably, it's probably another killing the, killing the Spirit Link really fast. So it does, it does really help. We also, you know, try and swap after DRs are over. Because, you know, once the lock uses a coil, fears on my dual TPS. When they're on DR, there's nothing they can do. They can't stop them. They can maybe do fro a frost shock, uh, Nova, but that's it. So we adapted. We played really defensive the first game because that's what we did on TR against them, and we could kind of outlast. Uh, we saw it, it. It didn't really work, so we adapted our strat, which is a bit, you know, zergy. Uh, but that's that's our comp. So yeah. Hey man, you got to play to win, and that's exactly what you did. Congratulations to Zunyaki. Congratulations to Yas Presents. They will be our first team in the Grand Finals, guaranteeing themselves a trip to the World Finals in China. So a big round of applause for Zunyaki here. Congratulations, man. We'll see more of you in the Grand Finals. And I'm going to throw it back to Red Eye, and then I'm going to head back to the commentary booth. Yes, congratulations to Yas Presents. They are the uh, winners of that upper bracket final. They're guaranteed through to the global finals in Shanghai. And, of course, they're guaranteed to go through to the grand final right here at GamesCon 2012. We are in the ESL CM Storm Arena. We've still got more World of Warcraft to come up next. It's Microsity.be versus Imminent Tomb. Don't go anywhere. <laughs>